he studied various functions of vectors. You talked about we talked about scalar and vector fields. Okay. And in today's class, what we will try to do is to try to differentiate the function with respect to the vector. Okay. So, and we will find out that there are three different ways of taking derivatives. Uh, there is a gradient, divergence and curl. Okay. So, just to remind you, so we talked about scalar and vector fields and what we said is that as uh, you have you have a function of of uh, multiple variables. Okay. So, so if you have if you have a three dimensional vector, then this is a function of a three dimensional vector. f of x, y, z is a function of a three dimensional vector. Okay. You can write this as f of r and what you want to imagine is something like a derivative of this function with respect to this vector. So, something like this. Okay. So, so this is what you want to think about. You want to think about something like a df by dr where r is a vector. Now, now uh, this will be different. So, so, so it turns out that there are many ways to define this uh, derivative and uh, it, it would be different if f were part of a vector field. So, if, if instead of having a scalar, scalar field, you have a vector field, then how would you think of differentiation with respect to this, to this uh, differentiation of the vector field with respect to a vector. So, so how do you think about these? Okay. So, in doing this, we will we'll look at uh, three different uh, uh, definitions of quantities that look like derivatives. Okay. And uh, again, again uh, just to emphasize that we will restrict the discussion here to two dimensional and three dimensional vector space. So, all that I will be doing in this class will be restricted to either to 3D vector space where r is x as a is written as x, y, z or 2D vector space where r is written as x, y. Okay. And again, again let us emphasize that we are going to differentiate with respect to a vector and there are multiple ways to do this differentiation of a vector function with respect to a vector and it depends both on the function whether it is scalar or, or vector field and it depends on what result you want. Do you want a scalar as a result or do you want a vector field as a result? Okay. So, so the first first uh, first kind of uh, vector differentiation that we'll do is this gradient okay now gradient is defined with respect to a scalar field okay and it has a very natural application in potential energy in force so the gradient operator is shown by this symbol it's a uh, it's, it's called nabla and it's a vector operator okay and uh, it is shown by this way. So, so it operates on a scalar field. So, suppose you have a scale, a scalar field f of x, y, z. Okay. This gives you, this can be written as, it gives you a vector which is, which has, which has, which has, has this form i partial derivative of f with respect to x plus j partial derivative of f with respect to y plus k partial derivative of f with respect to z. So, this is the definition of the of the gradient. So, gradient operates on a scalar field and the result is a vector. It operates on a scalar field operates on a scalar field f of x, y, z and gives a vector a vector okay and uh, that is denoted by grad f and and uh, this gradient is a vector field so it's a vector field grad f and uh, this depends on xyz so each of the components each of the components has a dependence on xyz all right so, so, this is the definition of the gradient and uh, there is a very common place where you see gradients. It, this is in potential energy and force. So, so, we already saw that the potential energy is a scalar field. So, you have V of x, y, z that gives you the potential energy at, uh, of at any point. And if you want to calculate the force due to this potential, okay, then the force is a vector. So, force is a vector field. Okay, this is written as negative gradient of the potential. 
okay so so it takes the a scalar field which is a potential and converts it to a vector field which is the force and the operation which converts it is the negative times the gradient okay so so this is a very common application and uh, and we and we see this in in uh, quantum mechanics regularly okay so now what is meant by the gradient okay now uh, in order to interpret the gradient we'll just uh, we'll just consider a function of two variables x y so so suppose you have a function of two variables okay then how do you imagine the gradient okay so the gradient gradient of f this is given by i do f by do x plus j do f by do y okay so it's a two dimensional vector space so this is what the gradient looks like so how do you interpret this gradient okay now in order to do this uh, now there are uh, three different ways you can interpret one of them is uh, what is called a directional derivative okay so uh, just to motivate this uh, let's consider suppose you have a function of one variable okay so suppose you have x then you can then this function of one variable f of x okay i can i can just plot it like this and if you take if you take if you take uh, df by dx so so at this point at this point x if you calculate df by dx okay then you know that df by dx gives you the slope of the tangent to this curve at this point okay so 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 just to remind again this is my function f of x this is a plot of the function and what i want to say is that you understand the derivative as the slope of this of this of this curve okay so so the slope of the graph of the function at a point is gives you the the derivative at that point so suppose i want to calculate the so you'll say that the derivative at this point for example is zero because the slope of the function here is zero so the derivative here will be zero okay here the derivative will be positive here in this case the derivative will be negative okay and uh, you can you can calculate the derivative using the slope of the tangent now now uh, the gradient is in some ways extending this idea to to functions of more than one variable so suppose you have a function of more than one variable okay now uh, now it's slightly more difficult to draw okay but what i'll show is i'll try i'll try to do this so so if you have the x axis and you have the y axis okay and uh, what i'll do is i'll so imagine this is the xy plane which is perpendicular to the plane of this paper and i'll draw the function on the third on the third direction and now for every given value of x and y this function has some value okay so so if you connect all those values of the function you will get a surface okay and i'll show this in blue so so this is my surface which represents f so this is the surface this is f of xy so f of xy represents a surface okay and uh, this is a surface that corresponds to the function okay now you can ask what is a gradient at any point so suppose i take any point okay let's say this point corresponds to some point some point xy okay and uh, i ask what is a gradient at this point what does a gradient tell you so so remember in case of functions of a single variable the derivative gave you the slope was related to the slope slope now in this case if you sit at this on the surface and you let's say you move a little bit in any direction okay then the function will change okay so if you change your xy by a little bit then this function will change right and uh, so you want to think about how this function changes as you change this point xy so suppose you ask now now in this case you can go in any direction you can go you can go in this direction you can go in this direction you can go in different directions and the rate of change of the function might be different it might change differently in this direction might change differently in this direction might change differently in this direction okay so so suppose you have a direction given by b okay then 
So, so the directional derivative of f of x y along b direction, this is equal to b dotted into gradient of f. Okay. So, suppose I want to know, so, so, so this is an interpretation of the gradient. So, you can take the gradient and you can relate it to a directional derivative along any direction. So, so if I just take that direction and, and uh, dot it to the gradient, then I will get the directional derivative along that direction. So, it tells me how the function changes in that direction. Okay. So, so uh, actually, actually this should be interpreted as a projection. So, you divide by absolute value of b. Okay. The point is that uh, you, you project your gradient in, in different directions, you get the rate of change of the function in that direction. You get the directional derivative. Okay. So, 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 the directional derivative means that you change x, y along a certain direction okay, and then you see how the function changes. See, in the case of just one variable, you could only change in one direction that is along x, but here you can change along the x axis, you can change along the y axis, you can change in some other direction and in each case, the directional derivative of f of x, y will be re related to the gradient dotted into some unit vector in that direction. Okay. So, this is one interpretation of the, of the gradient. So, in general, if you have a function of may, many variables, this function is, uh, looks like a surface and you can look at the, the rate of change of that, uh, of that function in any direction is what is called the directional derivative and that is related to the gradient. Okay. The second interpretation of the gradient of a scalar field is that it is the direction where the function f of x, y undergoes the maximum change. Okay. So, let us uh, get back to our function. So, so, what we had is f of x, y and you had x and y. And uh, what we said is that is is that this function looks like some surface. And what we said is that if you look, if you if you take at any any point, okay, any point which uh, in the x y plane. So this is some point, and the function has some value at that point, okay, and uh, you look in all directions, you look in all the directions and you let us say you decide that the function is changing most rapidly in this direction. So, this is the, this is the direction of, of maximum change of, okay. And this direction, okay, is, uh, is, the, is parallel to gradient of f of x, y. So, this is an interpretation of the, of the direction that the gradient points in and that is related to the direction where your function changes most rapidly. Okay. So, this function f of x, y changes most rapidly when you go along that direction. Okay. There is another interpretation okay, and uh, I will just mention this briefly. This is a, you can think of it as a vector normal to a surface of constant f of x, y. So, so uh, the, again this is slightly more uh, involved, but I uh, will try to explain this. So, so, so again you look at this plot. Okay. Now, suppose uh, f of x, y equal to constant, equal to constant. So, suppose you put uh, f of x, y equal to constant. Okay. Now, this will give you this, uh, this will give you some relation between x and y. And y. So, so a surface of constant x, y, f of x, y is constant. Okay, then it will be it will be some some line like that. 
okay, I, I, depending on what this function is, it will be some graph in the x y plane. Okay. Now, if I take, if I change the value of this constant, then I will get another graph. Okay. And uh, so, so what this gradient does is, it is, it is a vector that is, that is, uh, so, so at any point, okay, at a, at any point you have this surface of constant f of x y, okay, and uh, the gradient is actually normal to this surface. So this is the direction of gradient. So this is f equal to constant. So f equal to constant will refer to different uh, different curves. So at any point, the gradient is actually perpendicular to these. It takes a direction that is perpendicular to this uh, to this uh, f of x y equal to constant surface. Okay, in this case, surface refers to a curve. Okay, so 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 this is the other interpretation of the of the gradient. So, so essentially there are three ways to interpret the gradient. You can think of it as, uh, as the directional derivative. Okay. So, it tells you how this, how this function changes in a certain direction okay. or you can think of it as the, the direction where the change of function is maximum that is actually parallel to the direction of the gradient. Okay. And uh, then you can also think of the direction of a gradient as perpendicular to this perpendicular to this uh, surface where uh, surface of constant uh, f of x y. Okay? So, so, so these are the three interpretations of the, of the gradient. Okay? Now, uh, the next, next object that we will define is, is, is called the divergence okay? and the divergence is defined with respect to a vector field. So, so suppose you had a vector field, I will just say v of x, y, z. Okay. Then the divergence of a vector field is denoted by the nabla dotted, this is a dot product into v. Okay. And this is equal to dou v by dou x, dou v x by dou x plus dou v y by dou y plus dou v z by dou z. And uh, just to remind you, you know, my vector field v is equivalent to v x, v y, v z. So, these are the components of the vector field and remember each of these as a uh, function of, of x, y, z. Okay, so, that is a vector field. So, so, I take this function, so v x is a function of x y z, I take the derivative with respect to x, v y is also a function of x y z, I take a derivative with respect to y and I take the derivative of v z with respect to z. I add all those three, what I get is called the divergence of the vector field. Okay. Now, uh, now, now again, again if, you, if you want to think about vector fields, what you really have to do is to, is to imagine Ima, ima, imagine now uh, suppose suppose you consider a function of two variables okay then what does a vector field look like so so you have you have uh, x and y okay and what the what the vector field says is that at any point here okay you have you have uh, you have a vector field this is my v this is x y so at this point x y you have a vector v of x y similarly at some other point you have a you have a you have v so so at every point in space you have a vector which is what tells you the vector field so a vector field looks like a you can you can think of it as a collection of vectors okay so a collection of arrows pointing in different directions okay based on the direction of the vector field okay so what the the divergence is actually related to the properties of this vector field so so if you see that uh, if you see that around some point there is a net inflow or outflow of arrows then the divergence will be 
will be non zero if there is no net inflow or outflow of arrows then the divergence will be zero okay so suppose we had v of xy is equal to xi plus yj okay then you can immediately calculate the divergence of v del dot v is equal to so so what you'll get is dx by dx plus dy by dy is equal to 2 okay and uh, the divergence is non zero now now if you imagine looking at this vector field what you'll see is that uh, at every point the arrow will point radially outwards okay so so the divergence is non zero okay now uh, so so the divergence of a vector field is actually a scalar is actually a scalar field okay in this particular case in this particular case that we considered we just got two a number but in general it's a scalar field because the each of these quantities each of the vx vy and vz they depend on xyz so 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 each of these each of these terms in the divergence depends on xyz so the divergence of a vector field is actually a scalar field so this is a scalar field Now the 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 other kind of derivative you can think of is you can think uh, suppose I had a vector field and I operate it and I take a derivative and can I take a derivative and get a vector and uh, this is referred to as the curl of the vector field. So the curl of a vector field V okay is denoted by is denoted by nabla cross V okay so and this is a this is a vector field okay and uh, obviously since it is a cross it is uh, specific to to three dimensions okay so the definition of curl is specific to three dimensions and uh, and uh, you can write you can write del cross v is equal to you can write it in this form i j k um, d by d x d by d y d by d z just like a dot product just like the usual cross product v x v y v z okay and uh, usually curl if you if you have a vector field if you have a vector field then the curl actually tells you the about the rotational properties. So, if you have a vector field that looks like various arrows pointing in different directions, okay. So, if if this is my x y x y axis and this is the vector field that I have, then the curl refers to the rotational properties of this vector field. Okay, we won't talk too much about curl. Okay, but uh, but uh, I just wanted to emphasize that there are different ways of taking derivatives with respect to a vector. Okay. So, in the next class uh, what I will try to do is try to work out some problems okay, where, we, where we apply all these concepts of uh, vectors, vector functions, vector derivatives, vector products, etcetera.